welcome. It's a bad hair day for all of us, but it's a great day for Nashville, isn't it? And I get the honor of welcoming you to what is now officially the John Sigenthaler Bridge. today to join with our great city to honor a man who has left his mark on all of us. John Sigenthaler is a humanitarian who has dedicated his life to be the voice of those otherwise not spoken for. He has worked with the Freedom Riders and the civil rights movements in the 60s and has led a vibrant career as a reporter, editor, and publisher of the Tennessean, as well as a founding editorial director for USA Today. But most of all, to many of us, he is a mentor, a leader, a friend, and a father. Today, we dedicate this bridge to John I almost want to call him Mr. Sigenthal. <laughs> a man who has been an unstoppable force behind the development of our great city, a reminder of fighting for what you believe in and living each day with a purpose. So again, I thank all of you for being here to honor John. And to begin our program, I'd like to introduce the beautiful sounds of the University School Board. <laughs> Andrea Conti, the former First Lady of Tennessee, former First Lady of our city, and founder of You Have the Power, a nonprofit that was established in 1993 to raise awareness about crime and justice issues with the mission to educate, advocate, and empower people in communities impacted by violent crime. Andrea? Thank you, Andrea, uh, and thank you, University school choir, you just sound terrific. Uh, you want the power is very honored to be part of this dedication today, because you know, renaming a bridge is a complicated process. And I have to say kudos to the mayor and Metro Council for making it happen at light speed. John Sigenthaler has an extraordinary talent for bringing people together. And as only John can do, he wasn't even in the room, and he enabled a very small not-for-profit, you have the power, to partner with Metro government on today's event. So Metro is presenting John with the bridge, which is fabulous, and you have the power has a small part in presenting the plaque for the bridge. So thank you, Mayor, for allowing that to happen. In a program later today at the Country Music Hall of Fame, you have the power will continue the celebration of John's lifelong concern for those victimized by crime, hopelessness, and inequality. And thank you 
for including us in this dedication program. And thank you, John Sigenthaler, for the astounding honor of knowing you. Thank you, Andrea. Next, it's my honor to welcome our governor, Bill Haslam, who has been a remarkable leader of progress and commitment for the state of Tennessee. We are truly honored you're here today, Governor. salute the mayor for coming. I think it was the mayor's idea. I'll give him credit if it wasn't. This is a perfectly appropriate uh, dedication for a someone who truly is a Tennessee treasure. We use that word occasionally, maybe too often, but in this case it truly is the truth. John Sigenthaler is a Tennessee treasure that's known around the world as someone who's committed to doing the right thing, whether it's saving someone on a bridge or uh, going to Alabama to fight for freedom. Uh, he literally has made his mark around the world. I want to tell two quick stories that tell a lot about John Sigenthaler. A lot of you all have read Keel Hunt's book about uh, when Lamar Alexander was sworn in early to take Ray Blanton's place. It's a remarkable uh, series of events, and you have the U.S. Attorney involved, the State Attorney General, the Speaker of the House, the uh, Lieutenant Governor, uh, the, you know, uh, the Lamar is somebody who's getting ready to be sworn in early. All these people trying to figure out, is this the right thing to do? And when they do that, before they finally decide if they should do it or not, they call to check off a John Sigenthaler. <laughs> because they had to get the ultimate approval. The other story I would tell you is this. Uh, as governor, two or three times I've taken the, you know, one of the nice things about being governor is when people, when you call people, they tend to call you back. Uh, and if you ask them to lunch, they tend to go with you. And so I, if, on two or three occasions, called to John and asked him if he'd meet and just go to lunch and talk. I've always felt a little embarrassed that it was the governor taking notes from the reporter <laughs> as he walked through Tennessee history and the things that different governors have done that have been impactful on our state. So I'm here to represent six and a half million Tennesseans who owe you a debt of gratitude, to thank the Metro for making this uh, observation, to tell you that uh, in the annals of great Tennesseans, you are among them, and we are proud to call you one of our sons. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Governor Haslam. Now, we've all come to know that this bridge, historic yet current, is especially symbolic of John Siegenthaler's remarkable work and life. And I'd like to welcome Mayor Carl Dean to the podium now to talk more about why. Mayor Dean, thanks for making it possible for our city to honor a great man in a really important way. Well, thank you, Demetria. And this is a, a great day in the history of our city. You know, I wake up every morning and I get a card every day that just tells me where, where I, what I need to do. And the card today was interesting because I woke up with, after dealing with storms last night and thinking more bad weather was coming. I looked at my schedule and at 4 p.m. it says, rename Shelby Street Bridge for John Siegenthaler. And I thought, that's a pretty darn good day. Um, <laughs> and this is a good day. This is a good day I couldn't be more proud of or more happy standing here to dedicate this bridge in honor of John Siegenthaler. And just by the folks who are here from our Metro Council, we have uh, Berkeley Allen, Walter Hunt, Jason Holloman, Ronnie Stein, Mayor Bill Purcell. Bill, thank you for being here with us. Um, Speaker, former Speaker Jimmy Nathy is here, State Senator Thelma Harper, Charlie Cardwell, DA Tory Johnson, Brenda Wynn, Judges Randall Wyatt, Tom Brothers, Carol McCoy, and Sophie Crawford, all thank you. Governor Haslam and Governor Bredesen, I'm so glad that you were able to be here to join us this afternoon. I also want to recognize um, Dolores, and it's, it's always great to see Dolores, uh, truly a better half. And I want to recognize my wife, Ann Davis, who is uh, an enormous John Siegenthaler fan. Uh, and because I have heard so much about him, I want to acknowledge uh, Jack Siegenthaler. Um, <laughs> You know, Jack, I, I don't know, this might come as a surprise to you, but uh, your grandfather talks about you. And, and I give Jack credit for having really the best line in all this. When uh, 
John and I, uh, I told John that I, we wanted to do this, to, to name a bridge after him, and I told him, you know, it's going to go through council and all that. Uh, John called Jack and told him that, you know, this is all dependent upon council, council approval. And, um, and Jack said, uh, well, if it doesn't work out, we'll just change our name to Shelby. <laughs> so, that's, uh, that's good. so I am... Uh, I'm aware that you changed your schedule to be here today, Jack, and we're thankful. Um, let me pause now to thank and recognize Andrea Connie, and you have the power. Andrea, you have worked steadily for 21 years, showing victims they have power, giving them hope, and letting them know that they are not alone and that someone is always out there working on their behalf. You have the power is a staple in our community, one of those ingredients that help us make us the city that we are. Thank you for your hard work, and I am just thankful to partner with you on this great day. Um, I see members of the council here, as I've mentioned, and these council members, Jack, voted unanimously to rename this uh, bridge for John Siegenthaler. And I want to thank council member Ronnie Stein for his leadership as the bill sponsor. Last week, I had um, the chance to spend some time with John and his friend, Marion Wright uh, Edelman. Uh, Marion Edelman founded the Children's Defense Fund some 41 years ago. I listened as old friends talked about the freedom rides, the sit-ins, people going to jail for what they believe in and even dying for the cause of civil rights. From them, for them, it was a conversation. For me, it was a history lesson. And to put it in perspective, that's why this day is so important. During the conversation with uh, Ms. Edelman, John wasn't talking about something he read about or that he heard about. He talked about events he was part of, events he witnessed firsthand. And for the most part, those were events in our nation's history that, to that tore down barriers, events that paved the way for inclusion for everybody. When you really study John Siegenthaler's life, you will learn about a man who has spent his years working to make life better for other people. And that brings us to this dedication today. 60 years ago, a man was so distraught that he climbed on this very bridge with every intent to jump off and kill himself. John Siegenthaler's bosses at the Tennessean sent him to cover a jumper. But John became the story when he reached out and grabbed the man before he jumped. In the early 60s, John left the newspaper to work for Attorney General Robert Kennedy where he spent his days championing equal rights and protecting those who fought for them. That role got him hit in the head with a lead pipe and knocked unconscious in Montgomery, Alabama. When John wasn't working against injustices through his position with the Justice Department, he was exposing them in his role as a Tennessean reporter, editor, and then publisher. When John left the Tennessean, he founded the First Amendment Center, using that organization as a platform to remind all of us that the U.S. government guarantees every citizen certain rights and to teach us how to appreciate those rights. Something else happened when John left the paper. Mayors and other government officials started calling on him to help them pull off projects or solve complicated issues. Just last year, he co-chaired our nine-month celebration of Metro government's 50th anniversary. And John just didn't co-chair in name only. He chaired every meeting, and there were lots of meetings, attended every event, and put together a 50th birthday party that beats any I've attended. Back in the 1990s, when our city's murder rate was rising, Mayor Bredesen asked John to chair the Crime Commission. He did. The group went to work and recommended several initiatives, some of which remain in place today, all of which certainly helped lead to a much safer city that we all enjoy today. Also in the 90s, state officials established the Commission on the Future of the Tennessee Judiciary, and yes, they asked John to chair that. Everything I've just mentioned says a lot about our honoree, but that's not the stuff that captures the essence of John Siegenthaler. What defines the spirit of John Siegenthaler, his very core, is that he jumps to say yes. When Ms. Jones, a teacher at a middle school in town, asks if John Siegenthaler will come and talk to her class, he says yes. He eagerly says yes when the ninth grader that has, he has never met before wants an appointment to talk to him about a potential career in journalism. He makes time for everybody, no matter how large or how small the task, if it's going to help someone or help our community in any way. John is there giving it everything he has, and he has a lot to give. That is the soul of John Siegenthaler.
Our city and the world we live in is a better place because of him. And now I'd like to invite Andrea, Governor Haslam, Councilman Stein, and John to join me for the unveiling of the marker. Now I'd ask um, our honoree to make some remarks. I, you know, um, I remember well, obviously, the the night Carl and I uh, went to dinner, he called the check, <laughs> and um, when I got home that night, um, no, no, when he told me, when he told me, uh, we're really going to name a bridge for you, I said, you what? <laughs> and I got home and Laura said, what happened to dinner? And I said, Mayor's going to name a bridge after me. He what? <laughs> you know, I I, um, I feel so honored. I look across this, this crowd and uh, so many friends here. There is, um, there's no way to let each of you know uh, how much you've meant uh, to my life. And as I look at your faces, I hope each of you can think, as I, as I can, of moments when we've interacted and, uh, and when it's made, made a difference. Um, I feel so lucky. Um, so lucky in so many ways, and um, and most of all lucky in in the friends that I have um, been able to embrace. So lucky to have been born in in this city. Um, you know, I can go on like this for too long, but it's going to start raining in a little bit, and. and <laughs> And you're not going to be able to tell whether it's raindrops or tears on my face. Um, but something of both, I'll tell you. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm... Carl Dean, I can't tell you how much I... Uh, how much this means uh, to me. Um, to have Governor Bill Haslam here, uh, such a great honor. Um, have Phil Bredesen, our former governor here, is such a great honor. To have uh, Bill Purcell, our former mayor, is such a great honor. But for every single person standing beneath this bridge where <laughs> Gene Bradford Williams once wanted to jump, I am um, I'm deeply touched, deeply moved. I, Every time my head moves from one side to another, I see other faces I recognize, and, and tears want to come again. And um, I know we're all going to, I hope we're all going to go uh, to the Country Music Hall of Fame and, uh, and continue this celebration. And, um, you know, the, the, the problem is, at 86, um, old men think so. Uh, slow. 
and, and, and uh, Southern boys talk slow. <laughs> and uh, I could talk you right into a rainstorm if, uh, <laughs> if you'd let me. But I see Laura sitting right over there, and she's got a little button she punches and says, fast forward, fast forward, <laughs> fast forward. Um, and so I am going to say forward, fast forward. I'm going to say uh, uh, from the depth of my soul, I, uh, in some ways, I just don't understand uh, how this happened, but I am just so damned happy it did. I can't tell you. say, and that Dolores is going to start shaking her head like that. I, there are so many things I could say, and um, I'll just save them until we get to the, uh, get down the street where we'll celebrate the First Amendment right to a free drink. <laughs> thanks so much. Um, thanks so much. Um, Thanks so much for so much. More than anything else, I'm grateful to have been born in this great city um, and to have had such great friends and to have such great friends. I'm going to stop now before, as you can tell, I'm getting ready to cry. Thank you all very much. One life saved, so many lives touched. We, we cherish you, we really do. And isn't this a great day to remember? We always will. Once again, performing the beautiful sounds of the University School Choir.
I'd like to invite everyone to the Country Music Association Theater at the Country Music Hall of Fame in just in the nick of time for an exciting program featuring friends from throughout Mr. Sigenthaler's wonderful and remarkable life. Tickets are still available, by the way, for $150 at the door. We encourage anyone interested in attending. It'll keep you dry anyway. Thank you for being here.